morning, Psalm chapter 139, 1 through 10. It follows along and sits in the King James Version here. Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting in mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Oh, will I shall I flee from thy presence? If I Send up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me
Good morning. Peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather to worship today uh, and uh, for our second Sunday after the Epiphany, we're focusing on uh, Jesus revealing himself just a little bit more and in particular as we look at our Old Testament reading, you know, God is revealing himself to Samuel. How does God reveal himself to you? How does God, you know, speak to your mind, speak to your heart, speak to your life? And so that's what we really want to think about today as we hear God's word and uh, we take it in. Are we willing to hear his truth as he is revealing himself to us? So before we get underway, let's take a moment and greet one another. Stand, wave, wish each other peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. How are we doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Randy? Morning, Dean. Morning, Dean. How's it going, man? Hi, Declan. Morning, Cheryl. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Opening hymn today is hymn number 916. We'll stand for the fourth verse. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds, confessing our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. 
And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join in reading our intro at responsibly half verse by half verse, and join together in the glory be to the Father. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I waited patiently for the Lord. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and hear, and will put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and th your thoughts. Toward us, none can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them that they are more than ten years old. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. We join in the Kyrie. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in praying the collect of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the scripture readings. The scripture reading for today is uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel, book 3. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of the God was. 
Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he, he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, book 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both and the other, one and the other. The body is not meant to be for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the member of Christ and make them a member of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that you will be joined, that who is to be joined with a prostitute becomes one with her body, body, for that is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined with two Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin is a person commits is outside the body, but a sexually immoral person is a sin against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. And we'll join in singing our hymn of the day, hymn 783.
opening to St. John, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated, and we will have a children's message. Do you hear that? Anybody? Does anybody hear it? No? Why not? hear it because it's through a stethoscope, right? I'm listening to my heart, I'm hearing my heartbeat. I know you can't hear it, but that's what a stethoscope is used for, right? And yeah, you guys couldn't hear it. Maybe since you don't have a stethoscope, maybe you've done something different to try and hear uh, something. Maybe as a kid, you'd go up to a door and put your ear against the door and try to listen to someone's conversation, right? Or maybe even to try and hear a little bit better, you'd use a cup and put that up to the door, right? Or, I know when I was a kid, there were these gadgets that were coming out, which you could plug in some headphones or something and point a little, like, radar gun towards someone and have a sound amplified, right? And those were pretty cool. I wanted one of those. But, yeah, you guys couldn't hear my heartbeat, but I was using, using a stethoscope, right? And we hear of something similar in our Old Testament lesson for today, we hear about Samuel. Now, he did hear something, but he couldn't really recognize what it was, right? And he didn't recognize that it was God who was calling him. And so, sometimes that also happens to us. Either we don't hear or we fail to recognize, you know, what it is that we're hearing. We fail to recognize that God is talking to us just like he was talking to Samuel. Sometimes it's hard to listen, right? And that's why special tools are invented, because sometimes it's hard to hear things, right? And for us, sin, sin is what gets in the way of us hearing God, right? Listening to God, what he wants us to do, and responding to him. But sometimes we're even confused about how we hear God, right? And you're thinking, all right, well, how do we hear God? Does God talk to me like he did to Samuel? Well, Not exactly. We hear God through the Bible, right? We hear God through his word. And yeah, that is the same as Samuel because he was hearing the word of God. And we heard in the New Testament lesson also how he heard the word of Jesus, right? And so we are hearing the word of God just in a little bit different way because we have the word of God. We have the Bible with us. And so that is how we hear God. And Just as God called Samuel to do some amazing things, God also calls us to do some amazing things, which we hear about in the Bible, right? He calls us to be Christians in this world, to serve him and to serve our neighbor, to love others, and he has also called us to be a Christian, most importantly, through the death of his son, Jesus, right? He died on the cross for our sins, and we hear that in the Bible as well. And yeah, 
sometimes we fail to recognize it, sometimes we fail to remember it, or sometimes we fail to hear it, right? Even if it's being told to us. And that is sin getting in the way. But, no matter what, it is still there for us. And we come to church here to hear about it, to hear that Jesus has died for our sins, to hear that we are Christians, that we can go out and serve God, serve our neighbor, because he has called us for a purpose, just like he called Samuel. So, please fold your hands and say a prayer with me. Dear God, Dear God help, us help us to hear your word, to hear your word and know, and know that, Jesus that Jesus has forgiven our sins. Has forgiven our sins. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and join in singing hymn 953 as our confession of faith. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the text for our message today is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and when he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, that we too may respond as Samuel was taught to respond. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Help us to take your word in to process it and recognize that it applies to us, each and every one of us, and help us to not only understand that, but also willingly and joyfully submit to it. In your name, amen. You may be seated. Ben, could you put up that first slide for me, please? Nothing hurts more than being ignored, replaced, forgotten, or lied to. How many agree that this statement is true? How many you know, think that this is not a true statement? Okay. I, I want you to, to hear this story, and I've told this to some, um, but I, I don't know who, so you're going to hear it again. Um, 
as uh, I was going through uh, my failing kidneys, uh, I got to the point where um, the doctor said, well, you need to start thinking about being on dialysis, and so that's going to come probably sooner than later. And Mary went to this doctor's appointment with me, and I said, well, what are my options? And, you know, you know, explain the different kinds of dialysis, and then he also said, well, you know, kidney transplant, but you're not a candidate for that. Okay. So I went um, to prepare for a dialysis. They take you through a class, and they explain to you the different kinds of dialysis. You can do it in the center, you can do it at home, and, that, and those kind of things. And uh, then she said, and, you know, also kidney transplant. And I said, well, my doctor said I'm not a candidate for that. She says, that's not true. You can lose the weight. You can, you know, get down to the point where you should be able to have a transplant, and that shouldn't be a problem. You know, you don't have many other health problems, so you should be a candidate for that. So the next time I visited my doctor, I said, I'd like to be put on the kidney transplant list. He said, Okay. I said, well, last time we talked, you told me that I wasn't a candidate. I never said that. <laughs> if I'd been a cartoon character, I would have had plumes of steam <laughs> coming out of my ears. <laughs> so nothing hurts more than being ignored, replaced, forgotten, or lied to. Now, I want you to think about this in terms of of how does God feel? At the time of Eli and Samuel, I want you to hear those words in the first part of the Old Testament reading again. Look at the second sentence in verse 1. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. Why do you suppose that was? Well, if you read the second chapter of 1 Samuel, you hear about Eli and his sons. And it gives us a picture of where the priesthood was at that time. The priesthood was not God-fearing, and the priesthood was not faithful. And so the priesthood was like a microcosm of what really was going on in the whole population of the nation of Israel. And there's a lot of people who were not God-fearing. A lot of people who were not faithful. And how does God feel about that? If you're not willing to listen, then what? I'm not going to talk to you, basically, right? How many of you have had that kind of a situation in your own homes? Well, if you're not going to listen to me anyway, why am I bothering to talk to you, right? Uh, and, and so that's how God must have felt because God kind of withdrew his word as far as visions to prophets and messages from himself to his people because they weren't willing to listen to the truth. They weren't willing to hear the truth. They didn't want any part of it. Now, if you get an idea of this, just take some time and, and watch some of what's going on in our Congress lately. <coughs> if you watch any of the impeachment trials, and I encourage you not to, <laughs> but just put it on for a couple of minutes. And notice, someone's talking, but are the rest listening? Absolutely not. And so there's a lot of talking past each other instead of listening and really understanding. And, and that's where we get into danger. I think there's a lot of people in our world that are more interested in making their voice heard and not so much about taking time to hear others. And I think it's so important that we recognize the need for listening more than the need for speaking. God gave us two ears and one mouth. 
So the proportion of communication should be the same, right? We should be listening twice as much as we are speaking. And so I think it's really important as we listen to this, we recognize why God had withdrawn his voice. So how important is it for Samuel to understand what's going on? Go down to verse 7 if you would, Ben. In verse 7, we hear what takes place. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Have you ever picked up the phone, and the person on the other end starts talking like they know you, and you have to say, who is this? Right? Right? Um, And I found that more with texting because suddenly I'll get a text on my phone and they'll start talking about some stuff and all I got was their phone number. I have no idea who it is. And so I have to say, uh, excuse me, who is this? I don't mean to be rude, but uh, for instance, I got a text over, uh, over the holidays. I think I was still down in Milwaukee from my college roommate who I hadn't talked to in years didn't even know he had my cell phone number and he starts texting away and I I had to say I'm sorry I don't mean to be rude but who are you (laughs) you know and, and I think it's so important that we understand where this is coming from without faith how many people are in this same boat right God's trying to communicate to them God's trying to reach them and because they don't know God they don't want to listen as we see this Samuel doesn't understand who's calling him yet because this is God's first time in reaching out to Samuel does God reach out to you and me does God reach out to you and me to try to communicate something to us? Does God reach out to you and me and try to reach us with a specific message? Does he? And I think it's so important that we do a little bit more listening. You know, there's a lot of times where we're seeking God in prayer and asking for this or that, but as we ask for this or that, Are we taking as much time to hear him? Are we taking as much time to listen to him? See, God's word is filled with messages. And I think there's a lot of times where we shy away from reading God's word because we think, oh, it's just about rules and laws. Don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that. And, you know, but God's word is so much more than that. God's word is what? really a love letter, a love letter from God. And God wants to speak to you in that love language. He wants to speak to you in a love language that lets you know that one, he created you uniquely. Two, he loves you and wants to redeem you and wants to communicate that love to you in in very special and incredible ways. And if we don't see that or recognize it, we're missing out on the greatest part of the communication that God has for his people. But I think one of our problems is this. We are always incredibly distracted by all the other voices that are all around us all the time. Right? You know, there's that kind of deafness that, you know, people start to have as they grow older where... If there's a lot of other noise in the room, they can't pick out a particular voice. And they're incredibly distracted by all the other (coughs) things that are going on in the room. What is distracting you? What is distracting your heart? What is distracting your mind? What is distracting you from not hearing God? Is it politics? Is it COVID? Is it the situations that we see all over the world? 
Is it all the stuff that we have a hard time dealing with? You know, I've shared this before, and I'll share it again. You know, my wife has found that myself and my sons are completely deaf if the television is on. Really? So, I mean, she's had to go and shut the television off so she can talk to us. Do you know, now are you ready to listen? Oh, okay, yeah, we got the point, okay. And, and I think it's really important that for each and every one of us that we allow God the access, that we tune out the other voices, that we take time just to focus on what he's trying to tell us. The most important thing that God's trying to tell us is, you know, listen, I love you. I love you so much I sent my son into the world to suffer and die in your place. I love you so much that he rose from the grave to give you the gift of everlasting life. I love you so much that I send my Holy Spirit directly to you so that he will open your heart, open your mind, open your ears to receive the messages I have for you and create faith in your heart. I love you so much that I will continue to do this and continue to reach out to hear. But, Ben, if you would, the next slide. Are you willing to hear the truth? Are you willing to hear the truth? Because a lot of times, we don't want to hear the truth. Because sometimes the truth is painful. Sometimes the truth causes us mental, emotional, and sometimes even physical reactions. Sometimes the truth is something that we don't want to hear about ourselves. We don't want to be confronted with. You know, I know that sometimes when my wife says, well, how do I look? Loaded question. Do I love her? Yes. Do I want to tell her the truth? Yes. Does she want to hear the truth? No. But all of us get in that same mindset, right? Tell me good things about me. That I want to hear. Tell me bad things about me. Shut up. Right? When we are in life, God is revealing things to make us better to solve the issues that we have in our souls, in our minds, and in our hearts. And the issues that we have sometimes are because of our own sins. Sometimes they're because of our circumstances. Sometimes they're from outside situations that we have just fallen into. But God still has a message of love, of forgiveness, of healing, of his kindness and goodness that he wants to deliver to us in the midst of that circumstance. So are you willing to hear the truth? When we look, see Samuel, think about yourself and Samuel's circumstance. And after the first time, God calls Samuel. Samuel gets up, runs to Eli, and said, here I am, you called me. Doesn't complain, doesn't argue that this is the middle of the night, don't wake me up, don't, you know, stop calling me, and then Samuel you didn't call me, you know, just knock that off! It's three in the morning! Did Samuel say any of that? No, what does he do? Next time, gets up, goes, and obeys, right? Third time, same thing, gets up, goes, and obeys. Sometimes I think we're a little bit too much worried about our own comforts and not as concerned about what God is trying to tell us. And what God is calling us to is just listen. Hear me. Respond. You know, I, I get Mary upset at me all the time because she thinks that wherever I'm in the house, I can hear her completely. So she's talking with the bathroom door closed, having a conversation with me, and I'm two rooms away. 
Well, why didn't you hear me? Well, I'm not God. <laughs> There's important things that we need to hear. But if we're unwilling to listen, or if we're putting walls up between us and God, we're not going to hear him. And so, what do we need to do? One, remove the walls between us and God. Take down those barriers that are dividing us from him. And we know what those are. It's called sin. And two, willingly receive what God has for us. Don't fight it. Don't say it's three in the morning, I don't want to listen to you. Receive it joyfully, gladly. Respond to it like Samuel did. Here I am, for he called me. And God is calling each and every one of us, in one way or another, to serve him, to hear his word, to find joy in that word, and to find peace in its message. God's calling us to receive it and be blessed by it. So our response should be just like Samuel's. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. In Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. And the children are excused to go to Sunday school or confirmation class and the rest of us stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, there are so many distractions in our world, so many voices that are speaking, so many messages that we get all the time, phone messages, text messages, emails, and all kinds of things that can be so overwhelming in our lives. But there's one message that's important, one message that's life-giving, one message that brings us peace, comfort, and joy, and that's your word. We ask that you would help us, by the power of your spirit, to respond as Samuel did. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Help us to take your word in, joyfully, enthusiastically, frequently. To take the time to understand what you're saying and why you're saying it. And apply it in our lives. Don't help us not to say, boy, so-and-so should hear that, but... Help us to hear it for ourselves and apply it to ourselves so that we can walk with you in the joy of our salvation and in the peace that it brings. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all of those who are in need of physical healing. We pray especially for Barb Flagstad and hospice care. We pray for all those undergoing treatments. Lincoln Kennedy, Katie Klopek, Eleanor De Winter, Sharon Eichmann, Ed Grohl, Becky, the LWML North Wisconsin District President, Lori Harris, Cindy Heidke, Derek Kosmicki, Susan Kupski, Tiana Lang, Gail Maton, Jennifer Nearing, Roger Nowak, Jean Palomino, Dave Tucker, and Cheryl uh, Weiss, and Glenda Whipperford. We also pray for those recovering, for Doug Beal, Klaus Becker, Bruce Burt, Linda Druckerai, Dolores Dufek, Linda Haig, Karen Hansen, Don Smith, and myself. And we also pray for those who have ongoing health problems. For Neela Anderson, Bob Barrett, Margie Berglund, Jean Bassaro, Louise Christopoulos, Ed Forrell, Luann Gersmel, Jenna Rowe, Orville and Vi Howard, Ron Howard, Sue Keenitz, Laura Lee, S Susan Letzow Bus, Tom Meath, Michelle Noyan, Marshall and Sheila Piotter, Mary Perlott, Jeanette Raditz, Phyllis Smeester, Shirley Stralo, Madonna Trotz, and Bill Wagner. Help them, O oh Lord. Provide healing for them if it is your will. Comfort and strength and perseverance in their faith in the midst of their suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, we pray for all those who are caregivers, that you would grant them strength and perseverance to be able to provide care for those who need it. We ask for families in crisis, especially during COVID. Grant reconciliation, forgiveness, and help them to rebuild what has been broken. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are persecuted for their Christian faith, 
that they would stand firm uh, up against whatever threats they're facing. We pray for those who are victims of natural disaster, provide help and healing for them, and help provide for the things that they've lost. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, we pray for all those who are doing ministry for the gospel. We pray especially for Elliot and Serena Derricks working with Lutheran Bible translators. We pray for our school ministries of Trinity Lutheran School and NDMW Lutheran High School. And we pray for all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay throughout the world. Bless us all, O Lord, as we have heard the message of the gospel, to find joy in it, peace in it, and help others to find peace and joy in it also. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces. We pray especially for Christian Altergott, Paige Bogner, Tess and Sean LaRue, Roy McDonough, Garrett Moen, Maggie Knoll, Ron Pezzi, and Nathan Schrader. Help them, O oh Lord, to be courageous and faithful in their service and bring them home in peace soon, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we pray for our president, our president-elect, all those who are elected or appointed to positions of authority, Guide all these men and women to be honorable, trustworthy, to turn away from selfish political ideas and turn back to your will, your way, for it is your authority that they wield, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whatever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith and, above all, Firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when, by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. And after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we sing our Agnus Dei in the form of uh, hymn 550.
Let us stand for prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, hymn number 533, Jesus Has Come and Brings Pleasure. This is one of my favorite hymns. If you've never sung it, I hope you enjoy it. Lord, in your mercy.
we share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ teaching faith and love. The blessings of our Lord go with you. Just a couple of reminders. First reminder, we have Bible class right after this, so um, we're studying Luther's small catechism, and encourage you, if you can, take time to uh, come and, and listen to our, our Lord's word. Also, a reminder that um, we will have uh, an announcement probably next Sunday as to whether or not we're going to have the uh, pancake and porky breakfast. Um, we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen uh, with the uh, new administration to see if promises about a 100-day shutdown actually take place. So um, we want to wait and see. So um, listen for next week. Um, no matter what, um, you can agree with me or not, if a 100-day shutdown comes, I am not shutting down. You can carry me off to jail, bail me out, or whatever, but I'm not shutting down. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Any other announcements I missed? Oh, Bible class. That's the Thursday morning Bible class. It's at 10 o'clock, and it meets over in the meeting room at school. Um, today? Okay. RWSCS meeting today, and uh, that's school or here? School, and it is at 12.30. Any other announcements? Pam? Okay, open house Trinity? Okay, schedule an appointment. Um, if you need the number, Pam will be around to give it to you. Anybody else? Peace of the Lord be with you. Have a blessed day in Jesus. Go pack, go.